In today's video, we are gonna be looking at how to use AI generated images to help your storytelling and how we can turn that into a nice little piece of animation using some simple techniques we've covered before, but using them in a slightly different way. First off, we're gonna start off with creating our images. In this case, I'm gonna be using Adobe Firefly. One thing to remember when doing this effect is you 100% want a foreground and a background. In this example, I have a little idea of a person I want to stand and looking out at a city, kind of like he's dreaming, he wants to go there. We're just gonna type in a simple prompt and see what it gives us. So let's say, person standing and looking out over a big city. And then we're just gonna hit generate and see what it comes up with. Since we are using this for video, we're gonna go into the aspect ratio and make sure that we have a widescreen. And then we can go in and tweak some of these settings to get a little bit more of a look that we want to. Let's open up all the effects. We want to make this as realistic as possible. You want it to look like a real photo. Cinematic is always a nice look just to give it a little bit of stylization before we get into it. I'm not gonna use too many stylizing elements in this part because we can always do that later in After Effects. We just want to get a general look down. Let's add a composition. We're gonna go wide angle so we get more of like a dramatic scene. And then we just hit generate and see what it comes up with again. You can even do this in Photoshop using the generative fill and then adding elements one by one. These are pretty good. I like these two the most. I think this one looks the most cinematic. Like it's not perfect, but we can get this little crop out here and then have this little city and, and do a little bit of that. And once we have our generated image, we will want to open it in Photoshop. We can start cutting out the elements that we want to separate. In this case, we wanna keep in mind that we want to create a almost a 3D effect or a two and a half D effect where we want some separation to happen between the foreground and the background. If you just click W to bring up your quick selection tool, you can click select subject. And most of the time, like here, it'll do a very good job. Just right click and then lay up via copy. And that'll just make sure that it's non-destructive, that we don't delete anything in the middle. The better of job you do of cutting out, the better the end product is gonna look. Additionally, I also want to cut out the foreground here just to separate the city from the little hill as well. Now, before I cut out this middle ground here, I want to actually remove this lady from the background itself itself so that we have all the layers separated. By command clicking on my cutout, it's gonna select everything around this lady. And then we can go into select and then modify, expand. And then if we just expand it by, let's say five pixels, and then we can generative fill, just click that and just click generate. It should remove the person in the frame. And that is a pretty good result. It's not perfect. We have a couple different options. We can scroll through. I think I like this one the most. So if I just, Click that one, select both of these layers, the generative fill and then the regular one. I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna convert to smart object and just name this background. And we can name our lady, just name it lady. So in our background, I'm just gonna mask out this little bit down here. You just wanna make sure that you do a fairly decent job. In this case, I'm not too worried about it because it is just for the sake of the tutorial. And then we are going to right click and lay out the copy and just name this hill, save this, and then we will take it into After Effects and start animating. Now that we have After Effects open, I'm just gonna take my PSD file that I saved and drag it into a composition, which is just a 1920 by 1080 composition, hit okay. And then we can open up this pre-comp, open it up again, and then we have all our layers. This effect is super simple. If you watch the Magnets Media tutorial, you will have a pretty good idea of what we're going to be doing. Essentially, we just wanna add a little bit of movement to bring this to life. A piece like this would go really well if you're trying to tell a story about how this young entrepreneur or this young woman, in this case, uh, set out to conquer the world. She wanted to be a business lady. She wanted to make a whole bunch of money. And then you can use this to help tell your story instead of having to go and find a super specific image. We're gonna start off by turning all these layers into 3D. And we wanna make sure that we have the classic 3D selected just so we can add that bit of depth of field. If you don't have this little tab, you can hit Command K and then go to 3D Renderer and select the classic 3D. First of all, we're gonna open two view mode just so we can see you know, the different planes. We are gonna position these so that the background is the furthest back. So I'm just gonna select my background and I have left view selected. So you can just pick whatever you want here. I just have left, I just prefer it that way. Drag this back while holding shift, just all the way to the back. Then we want the lady all the way in the front, just like that. And then we can scale down these. You could even, if you wanted to, create a much larger version of this background in Photoshop with generative fill. On the background, I'm gonna hit S and I'm just gonna increase the scale until it covers the whole screen. And then the lady scale and then scale her down until she is 
fit in the screen just like that. So far, we have them in the exact positions that they were before, but we've added that layer. The easiest way to see what we've done is by right clicking in your composition, go to new, and then add a camera. From the presets, I'm gonna select a 50 millimeter camera and then just set the f-stop to something like 2.8 just to create a little bit of depth of field. If I go back to just one view mode, open up, and then let's have a look at the focus distance. So if I drag this around, you can see that it shifts a little bit. You can see the lady go slightly out of focus and in focus. For a more exaggerated look, you can take the aperture and the more you crank it up, the more depth of field you're gonna be getting. And one thing you do have to keep in mind is that when you increase the focus distance, some of these edges will become blurred. So you can always just take these and scale them up or just zoom in with your camera a little bit. So if you go to zoom and then just zoom in a little bit to cover those edges, Command Z of that. You can add an adjustment layer instead and add a transform and then go into that transform and you can just scale it up, which will get rid of that as well, instead of having to mess with the camera settings. So just set that to something like 101. You can either animate the three layers or you can animate the camera. So let's open up 2V mode again. Right now, I want the focus to be in the lady just like it is. And let's set that to about two seconds. So I'm gonna open up the transform and the camera options. And for the focus distance, I'm gonna keyframe that right there while the lady is in focus. And you can see our line right here, which is our focus distance. You just wanna line that up with the lady perfectly, which is at the very front. And we also want to keyframe the position. Now, if you go back to zero or at the very beginning of our composition, we can move the camera forward or backwards. So if we move this forwards, we can go through the lady. We just want to maybe go in a little bit more and then adjust our focus distance to be on the background. If we play that back, you can see we zoom out, we go through the lady and then she'll come into focus. If we move this first focus distance, if we move this forward, and then drag this out so that it's a bit blurry when it first starts. You can drag it a little bit closer. That way it's gonna catch focus. And then as it zooms out, we're gonna see the lady and then we can focus back to the background. We put it everything into perspective. Close the 2V mode, take your keyframes and just drag them out a little bit, make it a little bit slow. We don't want this to be too fast of an animation. We want it to be a pretty smooth animation. Select your keyframes. In this case, I'm just gonna use sexy speed as my base. So I'm gonna apply that. Ideally, I want to move these a little bit more forward. So just, it's a little bit slower of a focus pull in the end, just to smooth it out a little bit. And we can even take these keyframes and just make them not as steep and that'll help with the speed of it as well. So going back, now we just get a little bit more of a smoother look. So that's a cool little way of animating this, but it still feels a little bit empty. There's not much going on yet. We can add a couple more tricks to spice this up a little bit. One way of doing so would be to add maybe a little bit of camera shake to it, just to make it seem like the camera is actually there. We can add an adjustment layer and then we are gonna add a transform again. So we're just gonna leave this for, this is just gonna be a camera adjustment. And then this will be camera shake. We have the transform added already. I've covered this before, but I want to add sliders to this. So just make a slider and then duplicate that. And then in the position of the transform, I'm gonna alt click, and then I'm just gonna do a wiggle expression. We're gonna take the pick whip for the expression and pick whip it to slider control one, and then do a comma and then pick whip again to slider control two. It's just gonna let us control the frequency and the amplitude of the shake. So let's set that to 10 and 10 as a, as a baseline. And if we play that back, you can see it's pretty aggressive. So maybe even two by two will work a lot better, just be a little bit more of a smoother movement. Two by two is maybe just a little bit too slow. So let's set the slider control, the second slider control to 10. And just like that, we have a good bit of sway just makes it look a little bit more handheld and as it comes as it zooms out and we get the full picture i want to decrease the amount that it shakes so at around two seconds i'm just going to keyframe the slider controls both of them and go forward to about let's say three seconds we will just decrease the first one to one and then maybe the second one to two which is just going to make it a lot more subtle then playing that back we get that initial little um, and then it'll slowly ease in to a more a softer camera shake, if you could say. Now there's still more elements that we can add to it and maybe even refocus on this lady down the line. So maybe move that up, copy this keyframe and paste it in just so we go back to her, just get a little bit of a focus pull. One thing I just realized I forgot about was our little hill that we cut out. 
I want it to be a little bit closer to her, but not as close. So I'm simply going to take the hill and just move it pretty close to where she is, just like that. And then we are going to scale this down as well and until it just about fits the screen, just like that. And then we can go back to one view mode. Now, how can we add more details to this? Well, we have a little bit of sunlight over here and I feel like we can exaggerate it a little bit. So if I select my background layer and pre-compose it and just leave all attributes in Artboard 1, we can open that up. It won't have changed anything in here, so we still get the same look. It won't mess with any of that, but we can open it up and add a little bit to it. So if I select my shape tool and then create an ellipse, disable the stroke and then add a slight yellow orangey color. And let's draw a circle out here. And I just want to make sure that the opacity is at 100%. I'm going to add a deep glow to it which is just gonna get a little bit more light in there, increase the radius a good bit, and then maybe decrease the exposure ever so slightly, and then play around with the blend modes. Maybe an overlay blend mode would work pretty good, or a soft light maybe, that looks pretty good. So we have with and without it, and I wanna make sure that we don't get any of that weird line right there, so maybe just increase the exposure a little bit. You can always change the color, uh, to something warmer if you want. I want to keep it pretty similar to what we've got already. And then we can add a little bit of a flicker to it. So if you hit T to open the opacity, alt click it, and then just do maybe a wiggle 10 by 10. And that'll give it a little bit of an opacity flicker. That'll just look a little bit like some some lighting is, is going on in there. Another thing we can add to this is a little bit of texture. In this case, I'm going to be using some dust particles that I've got from Artlist. We can drag those in and scale that down and then change the blend mode to let's do try add that looks pretty good maybe decrease the opacity just a little bit and place that underneath our little glow layer and then we get a little bit of that particle look in there and then maybe even add another one maybe this one as well which looks pretty cool scale that down a little bit and set that to add as well and decrease that a whole bunch and as you can see it just adds a little bit of atmosphere in there just makes it feel a little bit more lively without having to add too much it's a super simple way of stylizing it now i'm feeling empty so we can even add a little bit of atmospheric fog in the foreground as well just to make it feel a little bit more ethereal so i have this this asset from Artlist as well, which is just a little fog type thing in the foreground. Set that to add and then put it down below the camera. And then if we open to view mode and put that into 3D space, I just want to put it up with our foreground, maybe even a little bit in front of it and then turn that off and then just scale that down to fit. And just like that, we have a simple little sequence with a little bit of atmosphere created. This is a super easy technique to turn photos into video, especially if you are working on a project that is more storytelling based. You know, you can use AI for this. So you don't even have to go and look or take the photos. You can just generate whatever you need. And this is one of the ways where I think AI is going to be really helpful and useful in motion graphics. I'm not scared of it. I'll just use it to the best of your abilities and use it to make your work easier. But that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning how you can use AI in your videos, and I'll see you again next week. I just want to say like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.